Spire. Welcome back to the Kidney Stone Diet Podcast, the show about reducing your risk for kidney stones and living your best life. I'm your host and fellow student, Jeff Saris. And I'm your nurse friend, Jill Harris. I like nurse friend. I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. That was the dumbest intro, but no, everyone else, I don't care. Hi, I'm Jill, and I'm going to help you with kidney stone prevention. There you go. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I like nurse friend, though. What well, did your little bad? Jill, nurse friend. I'm your, yeah, I'm your little nurse friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what you. Yeah, you're you're making friends and helping people, helping people feel better. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Alrighty, so we have another question, and okay. let's dive right in. Jill, this is Mark. I'm uh, based in Minnesota. I have two questions for you. One is, in patients who have oxalate stones, uh, is any other are any other metabolic workups? Um, warranted in that circumstance and then the second question i have is uh is there anything you can do to dissolve stones i know that's probably been asked before i just wanted to verify uh i've read or heard that you could add you know lemon or lime juice to your water and that might help in preventing stones and or even dissolving existing stones so that's it thanks bye all right mark they're great questions and you know it doesn't matter I never want somebody to say, oh, I'm not going to call because I know that's been asked a million times. My job is to help everyone understand what's best for them in preventing kidney stones. So if you don't understand or you have a question about it, I don't care how many times I've been asked that. I want you to get the right answer. That's what I care about. So never, never worry about that. So are there any other workups when you have had a calcium oxalate stone? So the first thing that we want you to do You called it an oxalate stone, but it will be a calcium oxalate stone, so I want to clarify that. Um, You want to do a 24-hour urine collection, uh, and you want to see if, indeed, your oxalate is high. You know, there's people that make calcium oxalate stones, and their oxalate was never high. There's other reasons why you may make them. Um, And if a urine collection says that something is high, now, so I'm going to break this down in two ways. So, because I think specifically you're asking about oxalate. If your urine oxalate was like in the hundreds, which I've seen in 21 years, like five times, then you may be sent for another metabolic workup at Mayo Clinic because that could be a genetic issue. It is so very rare. So I don't want everyone freaking out about that. It is so very, very rare. But I would need to answer that question. Uh, So there is, but I'm sure that's not you. You know, any, any oxalate, most oxalates, even when I do see it over 100, once you change your diet, it can be easily brought down, okay? There are the very few people that have a genetic thing called idiopathic hyperoxaluria. Uh, it's very rare, people, so don't think you have it. Your doctor would be the first one to let you know. Uh, so you get a 24-hour urine collection. From that, lots of times, people's calcium is high, Everyone wants to think this is an oxalate problem. It's not always an oxalate problem. Lots of times this is a calcium issue, whether you're not absorbing calcium or calcium is being taken from your bones and it's being spilled into your urine because you're eating too much sugar, salt, or or you have something else going on. So here's the thing, Mark. Here's a scenario. Mark does a urine collection. His urine calcium is very high. He talks to Jill. Jill says, work on your diet. And Jill also says, tell your doctor you want to do a follow-up to make sure that these changes in your diet actually help that urine calcium. Because if the follow-up says, hey, Mark did a great job lowering sugar and salt, and he's eating normal amounts of protein, but that calcium is still high, then that will warrant another uh, workup. And that should be blood. And it should be to see, is your serum or blood calcium also high? If it is, You could have other things going on, and the doctor will help you with that. So that's very important. It's an excellent question. And this is why Dr. Ko and many people who do this and were into the whole science part of this will say the gold standard is you do a urine collection and a fasting blood draw the first time. 
Okay, that's oh, so so you can rule other things out if the urine collection says something like high urine calcium. Yeah, and then he was also curious about anything for dissolving stones. So oh, he mentioned yeah. um, lemon or lime juice um, in your yeah. water. Yeah. So so I'm asked this multiple times a day because the internet will tell you a million different things. If you make uric acid stones, uh, they can be dissolved. They are the only stones that can be dissolved. How do you know, Jill? Well, just from a common sense. Well, I've been doing this a long time, so I do know that. But just from a common sense perspective, a doctor has taken a, a, a tool inside your body, basically a laser, like friggin' Star Wars, beaming you up kind of thing. <laughs> If you think sucking on a lemon, and lots of times those lasers won't even break up a stone. So do you really think a lemon is? Come on. Now, I'm not saying that specifically to you, Mark. I'm saying it to the general. Well, my doctor said if I suck on a lemon, that stone's going to fall right out of me. It's not. If it's a uric acid stone, maybe. If it's a uric acid stone, potassium citrate definitely will help that dissolve. So uric acid, once you alkalinize the urine it can deacidify that little stone so uric acid stone is I when think you have probably deacidify deacidify yeah, sounds thanks. a little different <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a great new jill term uh-huh. deacidify thank god you're here because i want to continue talking real serious deacidify your urine what is i'm so funny <laughs> So, d- d- what do you say, Jeff? Deacidify. Yeah, thank you. So that pill, potassium citrate, will do that. If you make uric acid stone, that will be very helpful in dissolving it. It doesn't guarantee it, but it absolutely can. I worry about the sucking on a lemon thing. A lot of patients don't need that. They don't even know what kind of stone they make, and the doctor will ask them to do that. And again, as a nurse, I don't override any doctor's orders, but talk to your doctor. Doctor, how will this help me? How do you know it will help me if I haven't even done a urine collection? How do you know that's an issue, you know, that I need to take care of? Lots of times, uh, uh, citrate also will help lower urine calcium. So that's why a doctor may be suggesting that for you. But every time a doctor Uh, suggest a treatment plan for you so you can educate yourself. And doctors love educating patients. It's just that we don't know what we don't know, so we don't ask questions. But I don't care if you have kidney stones or any other medical condition. When a doctor offers you a treatment plan, please ask them why they're doing that so you can understand. Because I think when a patient understands why they're doing something, they're more compliant. They're like, oh, if I don't do that, then I'm this is going to be a problem. And I know if I do it, it's going to help me not make kidney stones. So just ask the doctor why you are being put on a certain treatment plan. So then you can understand why that's going to help you. And then you will be more compliant. And uh, the other thing is uh, doctors like talking to patients that are more educated and ask questions about things. And also when a doctor says, Hey, this is low or that's high. Dear doctor, what do you mean? It's low. How low? What do you mean it's high? How high? Where should I be? Where am I? You know, so ask all those questions, no matter what medical condition you're, uh, you're dealing with. I think that's really important, too, because you should know what's going on in your body. And the doctor is there to help you understand it all. That's what they really love to do, you know, if they have time anyway. A lot of doctors are going to be like, oh, God, she's telling them to ask more questions. <laughs> yes, I am. It's your body. Ask, ask. Doctors are very helpful. Uh, especially when you know the right questions to ask. Sometimes health professionals, me too, we're very busy. So sometimes we go on autopilot a little. And uh, I really don't because <laughs> I'm a patient, so I understand these things. But I'm just saying, you know, they're in and out of offices all day long. And, um, you know, we just want to make sure that they're explaining things so we can understand it. So don't be shy. Uh, you know, we would go to a restaurant and we'd raise a fit if our soup was cold. Why are not we? Why are we not really getting in there with our own body and our own medical conditions? It's it's interesting to me, you know. So, yeah, the doctor's there to, to help. Say. But yeah, if, if you're they're, not, they're there to help. If you're not fully educated to um, yeah. even the questions to ask, it it does make it a a more challenging situation. But that's that's why Jill's here, and you're here yeah. to help with the urine analysis and your consults and everything, and really educating people 
to have better doctor's visits, better better outcomes from the treatments that yeah. that they may be um, having to go under. So, um, yeah, I think that's a great spot to end on the end this week. And let's look. I always have to look up the phone number to make sure I say it correctly. But yeah, if you have a question, you. yeah, if you have a question, uh, you can leave us a voicemail at seven seven three seven eight nine eight seven six three, and we may feature that question on a future episode. Be sure to check out uh, kidneystonediet.com where you can find everything that Jill's up to. You can find the Kidney Stone Prevention course, the email list where she sends you an email every every Saturday morning. And yeah, there's so much out there and Jill is always, always available to help. So yes. yeah, thank you for A listening. little addicted. Yeah, for sure. Like, really? Are you still talking about kidney stones? It's midnight, mom. I'm like, yeah, it is. So what the <laughs> hell are you doing up? Get to bed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this um, in between recordings too, but yeah, we're very similar in that regard where we're just, we're driven. We want to achieve and yeah. there's always more to do, but yeah. yes. And, and we want our patients to achieve too. So come on, get absolutely. on your prevention. So yeah. Thanks again for listening. Be sure to subscribe wherever you're listening or watching right now, and we will see you next time. Thank you, caller. Have a good day, everybody.